Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about Jack Hammer Esophago Syndrome. Jack Hammer Esophago Syndrome. You heard about that before? No? No problem. Let's go. Jack Hammer Esophago is also known as upper contractile peristalsis. It is a part of differential diagnosis of swallowing difficulty, otherwise known as dysphagia. And specifically, it could be picked under motility disorder of the oesophagus. It can involve all the muscles of the oesophagus or just a larger portion of it. Because the oesophagus is made up of two types of muscles. The first one third part of the cervicals is straightened muscle, while the remaining two third is made of a smooth muscle. The main problem here is the uncoordinated spasm of the cervicals. Epidemiologically, Jack Ama esophageal syndrome is rare. Glad to know that, right? and it will occur in individuals between ages 60 to 80. It is associated with GAD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease. What are the possible risk factors? Gastroesophageal reflux disease, hypertension, certain foods like red wine, but let me pause here. I'm not saying that Anyone who drinks red wine will have Jaghama esophageal syndrome. No, not at all. But it's on the list of the possible risk factors. Mood changes like depression or anxiety. Too hot foods like my friends who want anything they want to eat or coffee to be very, very hot or two cold foods, you know, just trying to tell you the extremes of temperature could serve as risk factors for Jack Hammer as a vigorous sin. What are the possible clinical features? There's likelihood of sudden and excruciating chest pain. As a matter of fact, Jack Hammer esophageal syndrome has been misdiagnosed as heart attack or myocardial infarction or angina many, many times. The chest pain here could last for minutes or even hours, or cause only suddenly. Thanks to know that, but may be frequent in some. The swelling difficulty or the dysphagia will be to both solids and liquids. Maybe to hot or cold liquids or to red wine. So if your friend is 65 or 85, complaining that anytime I drink red wine, I find it difficult to swallow. Or when I drink too hot or too cold, or eat too hot, too cold food, I have this swelling difficulty. But when everything is within you know, my temperature, not too hot, not too cold, but warm, I'm fine. Then be suspicious. That might be Jack Hammer with the Vigos syndrome. There will be chest squeezing with pain just like the presentation will be when it is heart attack or angina. Still on clinical features, there's a likelihood of regurgitation, of course, from swelling difficulty, right? And with upper contractile osovegos, so regurgitation and aspiration when there's backflow opening of the epiglottis, then the content will go into the trachea. Weight loss. Well, needless to say, when someone cannot get the food down, then absorption is also very low, and 
Of course, there'll be weight loss. And it's associated with GAD and peptic ulcer disease and there'll be apprehension, but most of the cases will be self-limiting, particularly if it's occurring only occasionally. But it will require treatment when it has become more frequent. Okay, differential diagnosis. It could be myocardial infarction, could be angina, could be gastrointestinal reflux disease. You can check my channel for this. I have lots of presentations on heart attack, that is myocardial infarction. About six of them. I have published presentation on gastrointestinal reflux disease, on peptic ulcer disease or dyspepsia, on achalasia. And then, if you check my channel for this venture, a lot have been said as for Ozovagia stricture, and of course their views Ozovagia spasm. Note this. Jack Ama esophageal syndrome is also known as upper contractor peristasis or abstensive peristasis. Some call it not cracker esophageal. How do we make diagnosis here? Thorough history, thorough physical examination. You can have endoscopy done and osophagia manometry will help greatly. We can assay and monitor the pH level along the cervicals. We can hook up the EKG because we'll be suspecting my gala infarction, right? Then have our cardiac enzymes to have our peace. Okay, CKMB troponin, right? And we have to monitor the blood pressure repeatedly. And of course, we can add to lab to have glucose, lipid, complete blood count, electrolyte, renal function, and thyroid function test done. Treatment. It is self limiting if it is suddenly occurring. But when it is persistent, or recurring more frequently, then we have to embark on treatment. So, to those who are having it suddenly, we'll start with lifestyle changes. Avoid triggers like red wine, like hot foods or cold foods. Eat only what is warm. Okay? Decrease the stress in your life. Remember anxiety or depression could be a risk factor. Treat associated conditions like abstention, GAD, peptic ulcer disease, and of course, psychiatry related conditions. Treatment. In most patients, the measures on the previous slide will be enough. But if that will not suffice, then we we'll move ahead to have certain medications like tricyclic antidepressant, proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole, dopamine lozenges that will help on relaxing smooth muscles. Remember, I've said earlier that the first one taught of a cervicus is ostriated muscles, while the remaining two taught is of smooth muscles. Okay, we can prescribe calcium channel blockers that will relax smooth muscles. So will relax the smooth muscles with phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors like Tenavis citrate, Viagra, Cialis, Evitra, and so on. But personally, I will not move close to that. Why? These medications could give a potential and is even going to worse if the individual is on nitrate. And knowing fully well that this situation will be more in people between ages 60 and 80 or more, then we have to be extra careful, okay? So I would rather not touch phosphodiesterase 5 in beetles at all here. But it's part of what we're going to see if we research the literature when it comes to Jack Hammer Osophagus syndrome treatment. So that is the fact. Personal opinion, I will not move close to the use of phosphodiesterase 5 impetus in handling this.
because of the age and the people of that age group will likely be on nitrate for you understand what i mean for hygiene and for my kind of in fashion and so on okay some will use butters they will inject that into the two-third part of the cervicals with smooth muscles and lastly when you've tried everything and you're not winning and it's recurring then referral to surgical department for myotomy and with that i've come to the end of this presentation so a rare condition but we need to know the fact about it jack hammer esophagus syndrome part of differential diagnosis of disorder of motility when it comes to dysphagia and wrongly diagnosed to be myocardial infarction or angina most of the time remember to share remember to subscribe you are free to leave comment on my channel i appreciate it.